Now, as usual, I would like to ask you to make sure you have a good motivation, pure motivation, and to remind yourself of your pure motivation. Now yesterday I began to discuss the methods for doing the insight meditation of samadhi in the secret mantra vajrayana uh, practice. We talked about three different ways, looking at the mind in stillness, looking at the mind in motion, and looking at the mind in relation to appearances. And I encourage you not to think that these are unimportant, but instead to do them as much as you can over and over again. If you are able to do these repeatedly, then you will gradually develop the clear, uh, the, uh, the clear appearances of samadhi meditation. And if you develop these clear, clear appearances of samadhi, this is uh, the, the gateway into making this life meaningful. It is the gateway to accomplishing uh, the Dharma. And so it is what will uh, bring you, uh, make both this life and your future lives meaningful. So it is very important. And I'd like to encourage you to please keep this in mind and to practice them as much as you can. Now when we are doing our practice, sometimes when we have the experience of meditation, uh, then what we need at that point are the instructions on enhancing our practice and the, enhance, and the instructions on dispelling obstacles. Now the instructions on enhancing your practice are instructions we, we, use, we use when we are unable to develop our samadhi even further. So what are the methods? Well, in the instructions, they give uh, many different types of uh, methods for enhancing the practice, but primarily there are the three ways of being skillful. And the, third, the first of these is being skilled in, uh, skilled in beginning. So sometimes, we shouldn't be that, like, sometimes we're unable to just start meditating. Instead, we have to be able to do it simply, whether we're going, whether we're sitting, uh, whether, we, uh, whether thoughts are occurring or not. We need to just look at the essence, whatever that is, and sustain it. Uh, and so, uh, what that means is that we need to never be, uh, we should try to never be distracted and always maintain our mindfulness, awareness, and carefulness. And so, the, this is being skilled in beginning. Mm-hmm. 
So the first is skill in beginning, and the second is uh, skill in skill in taking breaks. So instead of meditating in samadhi for a long time, uh, what is actually often said is that we need to uh, re uh, meditate for short sessions many times, or short repeated sessions. Um, uh, so uh, we should take short sessions and then we need to take a break. Um, because if we try to have a long session, sometimes it's clear, sometimes it's not clear, sometimes it's kind of mixed, sometimes there are many thoughts. Um, if we try to extend it for a long time, that is not good. Instead, what we need to have is clean, clear meditation uh, that is uninterrupted by thoughts. Uh, and uh, so if our meditation is, sta uh, is clear and stable, then that is good. So we should use our mindfulness and awareness to meditate for short sessions, and then we should take a break. Uh, and then, uh, then later we conti can continue. And so this is skill in taking breaks, and this is the second type of enhancement. The third, uh, uh, the third type of enhancement is, the, is skill in maintaining experience. Now when we do samadhi meditation, we can have various different meditational experiences that occur. From time to time we'll feel bliss, or sometimes we might feel clarity, sometimes we might have an experience of non-thought. And when we have such experience, we must not think, oh, this is a great experience, I, I need this type of experience, and be really attached to these and, and cling to these experiences. Instead, whether experiences happen or experiences don't happen, uh, in, uh, instead, we need to um, uh, we we just need to uh, not be attached to them and just keep uh, uh, not be attached to them. And uh, if we do that, then that is skill in um, in maintaining the experiences. Uh, and so, uh, in this way, if we have the skill in maintaining experiences, we will be able to enhance our meditation. And so these are uh, the instructions on enhancing, the fifth instructions on enhancing. Uh, there are many different instructions for enhancing, but here there's primarily these three methods, these three skill, uh, the three types of skillfulness that are taught as methods for enhancing our meditation. <laughs> Tuba <laughs> 
Now when we do samadhi meditation, we will have various feelings and various different experiences. And there's absolutely no need or point to being attached to them or, being, uh, or getting fearful because of them. They're really actually not that important. Uh, and uh, the, uh, so it is as it is said, the, sign, uh, the signs of meditation, of good meditation, uh, are as said, the sign of good study is that you become calm and peaceful. The sign of good meditation is that the afflictions are decreased. So the sign of having studied and listened and contemplated well is that your mind becomes more subdued and more peaceful. And when we meditate, the, the sign that we're having a results from a meditation is that uh, the afflictions are, uh, are decreasing, the afflictions are being subdued and um, and so this is the sign of there being of the meditation be, being good, and this is what is important. Otherwise, uh, it's really not that important what other uh, different perceptions or, or visions we might have in our meditation. Various uh, different ones will occur, but we should not think they're good and cling to them. Nor should we think they're bad and be afraid of them. It's like the story of Gampopa. Gampapa met, uh, met Milarepa, received the instructions from him, and practiced them. And when he did this practice, then Gampapa had various different types of experiences. 
uh, and uh, some good and some bad. And he thought to himself, well, my Lama is a perfect Buddha. It's, it's okay for me to go and ask him about his experiences. Sometimes he'd have experiences, uh, good experiences, such as seeing the entire uh, mandala of the deity, Chakra Samvara. Sometimes he'd have bad experiences, such as seeing, uh, seeing all the hells. And when, whenever he went to ask Milarepa about it, then the, the instruction that Milarepa had uh, to tell him was that it's like if, for example, you are pressing your eyes, you're pressing your eyeballs and looking at the moon, and when you press your eyeballs and look at the moon, you're going to see two moons. Now, sometimes you might look at the, at the do this and look at the moon, and you might think, this is amazing, it's wonderful. No one else sees two moons, but I can see two moons. How amazing. And then you get excited about it. Or you might be pressing your eyeballs and looking at the moons, and you might say, this is terrible. No one else is seeing two moons, but I am seeing two moons. How horrendous. Actually, there's nothing wrong about it. You're just pressing your eyeball. That is why you are uh, seeing two moons. There's no other reason or purpose of seeing uh, uh, two moons. Similarly, when we're working with the critical points in our mind, then we're going to have various different experiences. Sometimes we'll have good signs and experiences. And when you have those, there's no point in feeling happy, excited, or proud about them. Likewise, sometimes we're going to have uh, um, bad experiences and fearful experiences, but it's just like pressing your eyeballs. There's no need to, uh, to have any fear, uh, uh, fear about them. You just need to continue uh, the uh, continue meditate, meditating. And so Gampopo went had many different experiences and went to ask Milarepa about them many different times. And it's this, he gave the same uh, instruction every time. So it's similar when we are doing our, our samadhi meditation. Sometimes we might have visions or signs, and we should not uh, have any attachment or fixation on them, nor should we have uh, any fear about them. Instead, what we need to look at is, are the afflictions in my being being calmed and, peace, uh, uh, and pacified? Is this happening? And if the afflictions are decreasing, then that is good. Now, in order to determine whether our afflictions are, uh, are decreasing, we need to actually follow the instruction that comes from the teachings on mind training, where it says, of the two witnesses, hold the principal one. So sometimes you'll be able to look at your own being and you'll be able to say, okay, yes, my afflictions, uh, my negative, destructive mind strains are dis decreasing. Sometimes other people will say, oh, look at that person, that meditator, they do body meditation and their uh, afflictions and negative mind states are decreasing. And these are signs of good meditation. <laughs> Next is the discussion of eliminating uh, obstructions, uh, uh, obstructors and obstacles. And when uh, obstructions and obstacles appear, there are primarily three different types of obstacles that occur. These are obstacles of illness, obstacles of the dun spirits, and obstacles of uh, samadhi. And so of these three types, the first is the obstacles that become because of illness. Now with illness, there are basically two different types of illness. There are cold illnesses and hot illnesses. 
So uh, with a, when we have a hot illness, uh, then uh, shamatha meditation is by nature cool. And so therefore, when we have a hot meditation, then we do shamatha meditation. Then there are the illnesses of the, the, the illnesses that come from cool, uh, from cold. Insight meditation is like the light of fire or like sunlight. And so when we have these uh, medicines that come from coldness, then we should meditate upon uh, insight meditation, and that will help. So thus, when we have instructions because of illness, if it is a, a hot illness, we should meditate on shamatha, and if it is a cold illness, we should meditate on insight. <laughs> The second type of obstacles are the obstacles of the Dun spirits, the Dun or the Graha spirits in uh, Graha spirits in Sanskrit. So the, these are the uh, obstacles that come from uh, uh, gods or demons or ghosts or from, or from humans who are uh, casting sorcery or witchcraft or so forth. Now actually when we think that someone is doing this, it is actually nothing else than nothing other than our mind. As we discussed yesterday, all phenomena are appearances of, of our mind. We, we talked about uh, yesterday how appearances are mind and the mind are emptiness. So if we recognize this, uh, then these will naturally be pacified. So this is the method for eliminating obstacles from the doomed spirits. <laughs> The third type of obstacle are the obstacles of samadhi. So sometimes when we are meditating on samadhi, we have the experiences of um, uh, uh, bliss, clarity, and non-thought. Sometimes we feel bliss, we might feel physical bliss, we might feel mental bliss. And when this occurs, what, what happens if we get attached to them, then that will be an obstacle to our samadhi. Uh, sometimes we have experiences of clarity, it might be uh, clarity in the five sensory consciousnesses, it might be really clear, cl real clear in our, in our mental consciousness. Uh, so this is another experience that we can have. Or we might have an experience of non-thought, and we might then think to ourselves, oh, I don't have any thoughts. This is a sign of really good meditation. And if we have, this is a really strong thought, then we get proud. Or even if it isn't that, uh, if it isn't that strong, we get fixated upon it. And it is um, because of being fixated on these experiences, they uh, become obstacles to our uh, samadhi meditation. So therefore, we should have no fixation or no ob obstacles, but instead just naturally continue our meditation. And if we are diligent uh, about uh, doing this until we develop true superior samadhi, then we will be able to eliminate the obstacles. <laughs> I'm going to go to the 
tipo a gente que eu não tenho na minha tipo a tudo que eu não tenho na minha mão, na minha mão, só uma doja de pelo que na minha mão, de tinha de com, também tinha de não ler na hora de né, nem mão para tampo, um corna, que nem de Jesus a nem mão para saber, saber nem chante, chante de nem, tá de 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 nem mão para gente, gente para ter um copa, eu vi o rei, nem mão para ter carro. Nyamu baka pati lati ne, ini nyamu bama je, nyamu bama je pala ti ne, lengi bama so, lengi bama so pala ti ne, ini dunia tu, anya kena langsung bama jua, tak dia tak berjua yang berjuna, dia langsung berdemba, juga yang ada lata tiga, tanda, tahun berjuga nama, demba je ini tanda, tak kasih, goni sampai tanda pada la. Shubhadeh la ta te jiso na nga rangi sa na tanda ka ne kempo kong jara mo pu yung koro yung tuwa te shubhye Now, uh, in our discussion of the Four Noble Truths, uh, we have in this way covered the truth of suffering, we went through the truth of origin, and now the truth of the path. And then the final of the Four Noble Truths is the truth of cessation. So what is uh, uh, cessation? Well, um, because of practicing the path, whether we have practiced the Mahayana path or the path of the common vehicles or the paths of Sikha Pancha Vajrayana, we develop samadhi and because of our samadhi and we practice the Dharma and, the re and what happens because of this is that at first we begin to subdue uh, the afflictions and then we uh, Utterly, in, uh, utterly conquer or destroy the afflictions in their, in their roots, which means that we completely eradicate the afflictions. And eradicating the afflictions is called cessation. When, uh, when we've achieved this, the, uh, the afflictions have, are, are ceased or they're stopped. And because they have stopped, uh, they've, uh, because they've been blocked, the afflictions do not arise. Because the afflictions do not arise, then we do not accumulate bad karma. And because of that, we do not experience uh, no more suffering or difficulties will arise. And so this is called the truth of uh, cessation. And so in this way, we have now discussed the natures of the Four Noble Truths, starting from the beginning of the, of the teaching until now, we have covered the Four Noble Truths. And so at this point, I would like to return to and continue with the songs of Kempo Gangsha. <laughs> Tempat ni apa? Ini begini. 
And so to continue from where we left off yesterday in the song of, of uh, the supplication to the two Jamgan Rinpoches, we finished with a verse that is on the end of page 7 and the first line of page 8. And in this verse, it's, just, uh, it's praying one pointedly to the two Jamgan Rinpoches that in the future, during uh, uh, this life, the next life, and the, and the Bharata, we'll be able to, they will regard us with their wisdom mind. And in particular, the prayer that we will be able to uh, see them at the time of death. And next is the uh, the, uh, the next prayer is uh, continuing from that. It is an aspiration that the to be able to to spread the uh, act, or to continue the activity of spreading um, Buddhism. And this is the first full stanza on page eight. Though all beings deeply uh, through all beings deeply devoted study and explanation of the teachings of the five treasuries, may negativity, falsehood, and viciousness become mere words, completely pacified. And may the supreme banner of virtue and glory forever fly victoriously to the ends of the earth, above the complete destruction of samsara and nirvana. And so uh, we need to spread the teachings of Buddhism in, in general, and in particular we need to uh, spread the teachings of the Dharma that, uh, that preserves those teachings, which is the five treasuries. Um, and, uh, and so what we need to do, uh, what we need, uh, and, and so we, uh, we need to be able to practice them. Uh, and uh, if we are able to, uh, the way to practice them is that we need to request the empowerments that ripen, the uh, instruct us, instructions that guide, and the pith instru instructions. Uh, and by doing this, we will be able to practice the, the teachings of the five treasuries, and this will be extremely beneficial. Uh, and so if we are able to, uh, uh, so practicing the, uh, or pra doing the practices of the five treasuries is extremely beneficial and everyone, all beings, should uh, engage, on, engage in this. In particular, all humans, all people should engage in the practice of the, uh, of the five treasuries. Now when, uh, when they do the practice, how is it they do it? Through deeply devoted study and explanation. So deeply devoted means with great faith and great devotion in the teachings. And they should engage in the study and explanation, which means that they should listen to and receive the teachings and then teach, uh, teach them. And by doing this, what will happen? May negativity, falsehood, and viciousness become mere words, completely pacified. Uh, so there have been many, uh, so there are uh, difficulties and obstacles and impediments that, uh, that have occurred uh, that harm the teachings and the five, uh, of the five treasuries. And in particular, there have been people who have criticized and refuted the five treasuries. And so the prayer is that, uh, here that these will be just mere words. In other words, people will say in the future, oh, people did say this, um, but there will be no harm uh, and that they will not prevent any obstacles to the teachings. In other words, may they be, uh, may they be completely eliminated or, here, as it says here, completely pacified. <laughs> And here, uh, 
um, and in this translation I'm going to have to alter it a little bit. It says, May the supreme banner of virtue and glory fly forever, uh, forever fly victoriously. Or you could say, May the supreme white banner of virtue and glory fly forever fly victoriously over the end to the ends of the earth. And so here you can have the white or the black. And so the white means all the things that help beings and help the teachings. Uh, and the black represents the opposite, things that harm the, uh, Buddhism and teachings. And so here, this is a sign that the supreme white banner, the, the, the side of whiteness or of positivity, fly victoriously, be victorious, uh, and may its fame spread all over the earth. And by spreading over this, then, um, then it spreads above, it says here in the, in the English, uh, above the complete destruction of samsara and nirvana, but there is a missing word in the Tibetan, and that changes the meaning entirely. So may it fly victoriously to the ends of the earth, uh, un, uh, unwavering or undiminished above, uh, above samsara and nirvana, so something like that, above, undiminished above, um, above samsara and nirvana. And so what this means is that uh, may, it, uh, may it fly above all of the three realms of samsara and all of nirvana. And so this is an aspiration that the teachings may flourish. <laughs> Not only should the, do the, uh, is this an aspiration that the, uh, uh, that the teachings flourish, next there's a, uh, uh, an aspiration that all beings be able to practice the, uh, practice the teachings and achieve the ultimate result, that they may be able to eliminate the afflictions and so forth. Now what does uh, this practice depend on? As it says here, may the glorious Lama's life be steadfast. And so the root of all the Buddha's teachings is the long life of the Guru. Uh, uh, and um, because the Guru has a long life, then may his wish wishes be accomplished. Now what is the wish of the Guru? The Guru does not wish for, uh, for uh, wealth and prosperity or worldly activities. Uh, the 
gurus, which is our dharma activity, the, uh, the idea that they wish that the, te- that the teachings flourish and that the, uh, r- the root of being's happiness is, uh, is the teachings in this, is the wish that they may be spread and flourish. And so they may be, the wishes, may his wishes be accomplished uh, uh, as he intends. And so when his wishes are accomplished as he attends, it says, may this great earth be transformed into solely pure appearance. And so may it become uh, pure appearance. Uh, And then the last part of this line, it says, cleansed of the three spheres. This is a misinterpretation. It should be, it is, uh, may it be cleansed, transformed into solely pure appearance uh, through the training in the three spheres. So the training in the three spheres uh, means training in the sphere of uh, training in the sphere of study and contemplation, training in the sphere of meditation, and training in the sphere of activity. These are the three different spheres. Uh, and so the first of these spheres is the sphere of study and contemplation, and this is extremely important because uh, when we do not know the nature of the Dharma, the antidote to not knowing the nature of the Dharma is listening and contemplating. It is study. And so, uh, for that reason, we have the sphere of, the first sphere is the sphere of study and contemplation. And because of the sphere of uh, study and contemplation, we then need to engage in, uh, we then need to engage in samadhi meditation. And so forth. the second sphere is the sphere of meditation. Uh, and so, uh, when we, uh, we, we need to engage in meditation in order, and practice in order to achieve the ultimate results of this. But when we uh, do the meditation, we, um, we are not practicing solely to benefit ourselves. We also need to continue the activities and do the things that will spread the teachings throughout the world. And so, um, uh, so the, for that reason, we also need to practice the third sphere, which is the sphere of activity. This is the activity of uh, maintaining, and preser- maintaining and preserving the teachings of the Buddha so that these teachings of the Buddha uh, do not wane, so that they are preserved, and that, so that they spread and flourish all over. That is the third sphere, the sphere of activity. Uh, and so in this way, uh, uh, we uh, need to engage in these three different spheres. So, uh, and by doing this, may the entire world be turned into pure appearances. In other words, by uh, may we be uh, may be able to practice, uh, uh, develop the, tr- the perfect qualities that come from, uh, and, and may everything be so. This is the aspiration. <laughs> And so in this way, uh, by uh, being in this way, meditating upon the wishes of the Guru and fulfilling the wishes of the Guru, may all Vajra companions have pure view and conduct. Uh, and from the short path of the four stages of the, uh, of the uh, approach and accomplishment, in other words, through the uh, practice of the secret mantra Vajrayana, by doing this practice, may they gain the power to easily accomplish the primordial great secret in this life. The primordial great secret is the realization of the nature of mind, and then to accomplish this easily in this life means may they have no difficulty in, in achieving it. May they uh, uh, realize it. And, uh, may they realize it easily in this life. And so, this is an aspiration uh, to be able to practice and to develop a uh, superior real, uh, realization. Nee, <laughs> 
ਨਹੀਂ ਪਾਦੇ ਨਾ ਮਤਨ ਬੇਗੇ ਤੋ ਸੇ ਦੇ ਨਿਯਮ ਕਾਨੂੰਨ ਤੋ ਸਬਰ ਜ਼ਿਗਰੀ ਹੋ ਜਰੇ ਮਾ ਤੋ ਨਾਰੰਗ ਯੋ ਜੋ ਤੋ ਤਨੇ ਜੰਨਾ ਸੁਪਰ ਕੋਨੇ ਤੇ ਦਾ ਬਿਨਾ ਜਪ ਮਾਈ ਪਰ ਯੋ ਤੋ ਪਾ ਹਸੋ ਨੰਬਰ ਤੋ ਪਾ ਇਹ ਬਤੇ ਤਨੇ ਲਮਾ ਤੋ ਬਤੋ ਇਹ ਹੀ ਜੇ ਤੋ ਬਿਨ ਉਸ ਜ਼ਿਗਰੀ ਹੋ ਰੇ ਤੇ ਲੇ ਤੋ ਇਹ ਹੀ ਅੰਦਰ ਜੀ ਸਰਾ ਕੋ ਤੇ ਤਾ ਕੋ ਤੋ ਇਹ ਹੀ ਜ਼ਿਨੇ ਜੋ ਕੋ ਲੇ ਜੋ ਤੇ ਮੇਰ ਤੇ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤੇ ਤੇ ਮੈਂ ਤੋ ਕੇ ਜੋ ਕੋ ਲੇ ਜੋ And because of praying making these aspirations making heartfelt aspirations that are not mere words because of doing this we ask that you please remain with the mirror of your realization as a witness uh and because of pra- uh, of our our practice and our aspirations and our conduct of uh, uh, uh what uh we are at, what are we asking for we are, who or who is the witness of these uh it is uh the witness is the mirror of your realization the mirror of the uh, of the lama's wisdom mind uh in this uh uh we are made in this it is clearly seen that we are making the aspiration without any deceit or without any uh falsehood uh and so they are able to see that our uh, that we are making true aspirations with a pure heart uh and and from the, from seeing this for this purpose through the vision of your wisdom think of us here and now so regard us with your wisdom please bestow the fruits of our wishes without difficulty like an excellent vase in a wish fulfilling tree everything that is fine and good auspicious circumstances timely ripening with the flowers of flowers of the 10 million signs and so uh these are good aspirations of pure uh, tr- uh, tr- uh truly good aspirations that and because of these aspirations may it be like a like the the, the excellent vase that gives everything you wish or wish fulfilling tree may we be able to achieve all of our hopes that day is a something to you can do a chujo sumo konti la tene jo wa ne la ni te ya je to tan ze jin no ban na de jin to ka ti wa yin de na da ja ka tan ba zo bu sun ji jong din de ji long de na yo wa de te yo jan wei long de long kan din no de yo wa de se no do ting de ji ja bu no de yo wa de do ting de ji ja bu no de ka re sam yo wa de se na te yo wo to se de la dan ba do de ji ja wa ji ja na no dan ba bo pa wo chin bo jong on jor se long de na yo wa de la ta san ji ji dan ba de se nyam ਜੇ ਕੋ ਨੋ ਜੇ ਦੇ ਜੀ ਤੇ ਤੇ ਨਾਮ ਦਾ ਕਾਪਸਲਾ ਤੇ ਹਰਿਓ ਸੋਰ ਸੇਪਾ ਸੋ ਜੀ ਜੇ ਤੇ ਬਾ ਪਰਵਰ ਸੇਪਾ ਤੋ ਜੇ ਕੋ ਨੋ ਜੇ ਦੇ ਜੀ ਪਰਵਰ ਸੇਪਾ ਕੇ ਚਤੋ ਤੇ ਨੇ ਡੰਬਾ ਤੇ ਲਮਾ ਚੇ ਪਰ ਤੋ ਪਾਪਾ ਜੇ ਸ਼ੈਂਕ ਦੇ ਠੀਕ ਹੈ ਸੇ ਨਾ ਕਰੇ ਜੋ ਕੋ ਯੋ ਵਾਲੇ ਤੇ ਨੋ ਲੂਡੂ ਸੇ ਕੀ ਜੇ ਯੂ ਕਰੇ ਤੇ ਲੂਡੂ ਥਾਏ ਸੇ ਕੀ ਤੇ ਲੰਗ ਤੇ ਬਾ ਦੇ ਲਾ ਲੂਡੂ ਥਾਏ ਸੇ ਕੀ ਤੇ ਜੁੰਗ ਦੇ ਲਾ ਲੂਡੂ ਥਾਏ ਸੇ ਕੀ ਤੇ ਸੇ ਤੇ ਬਤੋ ਮਾਈ ਪਰ ਕੁਦੂ ਕੇ ਕਰੇ ਨਾ ਕਰੇ ਸੇ ਨਾ ਸੀ ਜਾ ਨਾ ਨਾ ਤੇ ਬਪੋ ਤੇ 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 ਬਲੂ ਦੂ ਜੀ ਜਾ ਵਾ ਸੀ ਜਾ ਨਾ ਨਾ ਤੇ ਬਪੋ ਬੋ ਜੇ ਬੋ ਜੋ ਜੋਰ ਸੂ ਤੇ ਸੀ ਜਾ ਨਾ ਤੇ ਜੇ ਜੀ ਨਾ ਬਨਾ ਤੇ ਤੇ ਨੇ ਜੇ ਜੀ ਨਾ ਬਨਾ ਤੇ ਬਲਾ ਤੇ ਨੇ ਸੋ ਜੀ ਜੇ ਤੇ ਬਪੇ ਰੋ ਤੋ ਸੇ ਜੀ ਨਾ ਤੇ ਜੀ ਤੇ ਬੋ ਕੇ ਚਾ ਤੋ ਲਾ ਦਾ ਤੇ ਦਾ ਬੋ ਨਾ ਕਰੇ ਸੋ ਨੇ ਜਰ ਵਾ ਤੋ ਬੋ ਸੂ ਜੀ ਜੰਮ ਦੇ ਦੇ ਜੀ ਉਸ ਸੋ ਜੀ ਖਾਲ ਨੂੰ ਬਕਾ ਸੋ ਲਾ ਨੂੰ ਦੇ ਨਾ ਹੋਇਆ ਨੂੰ ਦੇ ਨੋ ਜੀ ਦਾ ਦਾ ਤਾ ਜੀ ਰੋ ਤਾ ਜੀ ਤੋਂ ਮਾ ਜਾ ਕੇ ਜੇ ਲਾ ਨੇ ਜੰਮ ਕਾ ਕੋ ਟੂ ਲੂ ਟੂ ਦਾ ਇਹ ਸੇ ਬਕਾ ਸੋ ਲਾ ਤੇ ਉਸ ਚੋਰੇ ਨੇ ਸੇ ਲਾ ਨੂੰ ਦੇ ਬਾ ਲੂ ਟੂ ਤੇ ਲੂ ਟੂ ਦਾ ਇਹ ਜੀ ਸੇ ਆ ਚੋਰੇ ਲਾ ਨੇ ਜਿੰ ਦੇ ਬਾ ਤੋਂ ਚਨੇ ਜੋ ਮੋਂ ਤੇ ਜੇ ਨਾ ਤੇ ਜੀ ਨਾ ਬਾ ਨਾ ਇਹ ਤੇ ਬਾ ਤੇ ਪਰ ਵਾ ਦੇ ਟੀਚਰ ਨਾ ਸੋ ਜੀ ਤੇ ਲੋਂ ਦੇ ਬਾ ਤੋਂ ਮਾਈ ਬਾ ਜਾ ਕੇ ਨਾਮ ਦਰ ਤੇ ਤੋ ਤੁਰ ਬੰਦੇ ਬਾ ਜੇ ਸੋ ਜੀ ਤਮ ਜੀ ਜਨ ਸੇ ਬਾ ਦੇ ਸੋ ਜੇ ਤੋ ਤੁ ਬਤਾ ਹੋ ਜੇ ਗੈ ਜੇ ਬਾ ਤੁਨੇ ਚੇ ਪਰ ਤੋ ਬਾ ਬਾ ਜੇ ਜੇ ਕਿਉਂ ਆ ਲੈ ਲ
de care nu are sănătate, ca să la sunt de de bate, de om perna tanda ca de pe de bate la de în de marvat un muro, mu ce cu do de ne de pe manu de de bate ne de un de de tenzu că de intră pute hero om ne ne tom cu pe de hero ne bate pe din mie pati că eu țin care de sănătate ca să la parcul ca pe că eu am mare la ne la pe că trecu eu are ne trecin te un chin de mambo eu am mare la eu țin te la tine te ne ca din monte că de de te zic că pe hate câmbo eu are ca din monte că de de te sus sau eu are sena că am mare că va de na ciu de trope că sau eu are că mari că văd că nu ești trupe sumbate pe din cei ni oare de ce nu ai de la un din un din te ne sabote eu mare la eu sunt de la tine jumă cu un trupul băieți că ca din monte să din nou capsula te ne chomi că sunt pe că așa ce sunt se că de la tine pe el grupa membru ei cum băieți cum are de te ne jema un din un din din do tot ne te ne ca din monte eu sunt Ciao tu vadi la tene, cade per tempo per volta. E ne sono mai dimmi che un mondo c'è una recente di te, c'è una mano, un mano, un mano, un mano, un pezzo che c'è da te per perne, recente di te c'è un po' per volta la tene, non c'è un mano, 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 c'è chi si ne è un cittadino di due parti, ne è un cittadino di un parco, 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 Ciao, mi chiamo Achu. Achu, ciao, sono. Achu, ciao, sono. Achu, non lo so, ti metto un panese. 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 Ti metto And the reason for this is because the five treasuries are so extremely important. Uh, they contain all the teachings of the Buddha, and it's extremely important that they may be, uh, that they may be uh, preserved. And it, as it says here, may the Supreme Guru, supre uh, prophesied by the victor, um, whose activity contains all the liber liberation of all victors, the Supreme Guru, who was prophesied by the victor, He was prophesied by the Buddha. Now, where was he prophesied? He was prophesied in the King of Samadhi Sutra, in which it says, in the future, when the teachings of the Buddha are waning, there will be a, an individual named Mati or Lodra who will uh, spread the teachings of the Buddha. And so this is an, uh, a pr prediction the Buddha made, that in the future, the teachings of the Buddha would be waning. And at that time, there would be an individual whose name Uh, and uh, whose name would uh, be Mati or Lodra, uh, who will appear. And this is like the name of Jankan Kondra, Lodra Thai. So Lodra Thai's name was prophesied here uh, in the sutra. Uh, so this would be a great uh, guru who uh, would, contain, uh, who's, um, uh, who would uh, act to uh, bring happiness to all sentient beings and spread, um, spread the Dharma. And so this prophecy that uh, Lodratai would appear uh, says that his activity contains the liberation of all victors. And so his main activity, uh, Lodratai's main activity, was compiling the five treasuries. And because of the uh, compiling these five treasuries, which contain all of the teachings of the uh, Buddha, he was able to spread and uh, uh, to preserve and spread the teachings of the Buddha, and uh, thus to uh, uh, to bring the happiness to many beings. And so, this is actually prophesied by the Buddha. And 2,500 years later, 
uh, jumping contra Lodra Thai actually appeared uh, as, had, uh, as the Buddha prophesied, and his name, Lodra Thai, it contains the word that was prophesied, Lodra, or Thai. And so he contained, uh, so he compiled these, and, um, and through his activity, he was able to actually spread and preserve the teachings of the Buddha. So he bestowed the entirety of the Dharma treasuries that dispel poverty forever. So may you who are on the side of fostering virtue uh, and remain within the vow to protect the Buddha's teachings. Uh, and so, uh, what was the main activity that he did to protect the uh, Buddha's teachings? At that point, it was a time when the teachings of the Buddha were actually waning. If we think about the Kaju teachings, so the teachings of the Kaju, uh, the Tantric teachings in the Kaju tradition that came from the Tantras collected by Marpa and Ngolchuku Dorjin. So these uh, Tantras of the tradition of, Mar of Marpa and Ngol uh, were actually extremely rare and they're in danger of being lost. There are very few copies of the text. And the reason for this is at that time, uh, there was very little printing, it was very difficult to print, and most of the copies were actually manuscript copies that were written out by hand. And there were not very, uh, there were very few educated scribes who could actually uh, write, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, write, these, write these out. And so Jamkin Kontrol, uh, 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 and there were not many copies of these left, so Jamkin Kontrol uh, compiled them in the treasury of Kaju Mantra. Uh, mantra. Uh, and now the way he um, uh, the, the way he was able to compile them is that there were some manuscripts that had been uh, that had been made by the fourth Shamra uh, Chena Chuki uh, Japa, but there were only one or two copies of them, and they were not even very clear uh, clear editions. So when Jamun Kontra Lodra Thai Com, uh, compiled his treasury of the Kaju Mantra, uh, then he also uh, re, uh, relied upon the uh, teachings from uh, Chami Rinpoche's, uh, the, uh, the 13 dharmas, the Ach, the Acha, the 13 dharmas that began with the word A, ah, so-called because it began with the word A. Ah. Uh, and in, so in this way he was able to preserve the transmissions, trans, trans, trans uh, 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 the transmissions of the empowerments and so forth, and he compiled this treasury of Kaju Dharma and spread it. Likewise, with the teachings of the Nima tradition, he, gathered, he col uh, collected all the teachings from the precious uh, terma or revelations, and he collected them. Um, there, there are many that were in very rare uh, manuscripts. He gathered them all and was able to compile the treasury of precious terma and spread uh, them in, uh, so that they uh, would remain and flourish without being lost. He also collected all of the instructions of the eight uh, different practice lineages, the eight chariots of the practice lineages, uh, and in the in what is called the uh, treasury of precious instructions. And then he also composed the, the Treasury of Knowledge, which con uh, contains all of the different topics, uh, everything, uh, all the different topics in, uh, of knowledge in a single book. Now, Jamyang Kense Wampo and Pata Rinpoche said when they saw this that this was not a book that an ordinary individual could have written. He had to, it had, must have been that a wisdom dakini entered him so that he could write, uh, write the book. And so in this way, he wrote these superior uh, uh, treatises and, he, uh, the, and collected these uh, uh, and collected these great treasuries and by this way he was able to bring great benefit to the activities of the Buddhist teachings. So may you who are on the side of virtue and remain within the vow to protect the Buddhist teachings. <laughs> So may you who are on the side of fostering virtue remain within the vow to protect the Buddha's teachings. So you who are on the side of fostering virtue, these are the Dharma protectors and guardians. 
uh, and the uh, the activity is to uh, spread these uh, spread these five treasuries that uh, bring happiness to um, to beings and dispel all suffering and poverty. So they are on the side of virtue. May you perform the activity of spreading the five tre treasures, essence of the victor's teachings. So the essence of the Buddha's teachings is in the five treasuries. So you may, may they perform um, the activity of spreading them infinitely in all directions. So this is a request to the Dharma protectors and guardians. May they perform this activity of spreading the five treasuries. <laughs> Next there, uh, finally, the prayer, uh, the supplication concludes with the, uh, with the auspicious aspirations. In the space of Dharmatatu, great clouds of blessings of the Vidyadra lineage are gathered in fullness. So here, the, uh, the, uh, the, there is the sky of the Dharmadhatu, and within the sky there are the clouds of blessings that gather. Uh, and then with completely pure, sublime faith, a multitude of disciples have come forth like a treasure. Uh, so uh, and may, there, may there be many um, people to practice the, the Dharma, and many people who, uh, who, uh, who practice meditation. And until we achieve the four abundances, may the fine rain of uh, instructions that ripen and liberate. Uh, so may the may the may the great root lamas um, then shower the rain of dharma upon students and the great students who have faith and strong uh, samaya and devotion, and may they uh, may they shower the rain of teaching the dharma and the essence of teaching and practice. And may it spread effortlessly through the. Um, uh, through the three worlds to quell the waning of wisdom. Uh, and so may any, uh, may any decrease of wisdom be pacified or quelled, and may the teachings increase and spread. And so this is a, an, an auspicious prayer. <laughs> Having received the Vajra command of Kyabjikawa Rinpoche, a disciple of the two Jamgans, lords of the family, who is the life force of the teachings, the practice lineage, and protector of the Dharma with definitive meaning, and aspires that everything he does be one with the Guru's teachings, in other words, at the re request of the previous uh, Sermon Gawa Rinpoche, Kembogangsha Rompo, a lazy bones in the guise of a monk, having the fortune of taking the feet of the two Vajradhara Jamgan Rinpoche's on his crown, made this aspiration in connection with the, uh, with the Gana Chakra offering on the 25th day, and requests the blessings of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas to accomplish it. <laughs> Tu 
And so that completes the teaching. You have a uh, really excellent faith and devotion in the Dharma, and you've come here out of that, and you've engaged in listening, contemplation, and meditation, and I'd like to thank you for this from the bottom of my heart. Now, in the f uh, future, I'd like to ask that you uh, make the aspiration that in the future you will be able to do uh, your practice well, and um, because of this, you'll be able to have uh, happiness in this lifetime and no obstacles or uh, no obstacles on your path. And I also will pray, make the same prayer myself fervently. Uh, so now please do your practice well. <laughs>